Jameson, and I'm sitting next to a girl for the first time in 20 episodes. Hi! I have to do that because Jim does it. This is Julie Jag, filling in for Jim Seamus, who is not at the World He's not right here. Now. He's not here. No, he, 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 uh, he got nervous. He, um, he felt the pressure of this job, and he yeah. couldn't handle it. The lights basically what he said. Be bright. Yeah. Be bright. He went against Scotts Valley, and they ran him right out of town, I think. So yeah. he's not here for this week. Hopefully he'll be back next week. We don't know. We don't know. He, he, no. he, he might yeah. not come back. We haven't now. heard from him. No. Yeah. So, yeah. Which is good. Um, but this is double Full coverage. Range. This is double coverage for week eight. Uh, Post-game analysis. We had a full slate of games. A lot of different uh, interesting stories that came out of this week. And um, how many games did you see? I saw zero. None, but... I know everything from reading she's the a, copy in the Santa Cruz Center. She's a team player. She'll help us out, never, <laughs> no doubt. Um, I guess the big game on Friday night was Watsonville versus MVC. Um, I was down over there in... MVC well, land. Well, in Watsonville. In, in Watsonville. MVC. Yeah. MVC. It's really, it's way out there though. It yeah. is. Yeah. It's pretty remote. Yeah. But they yeah. have equestrian over there. Did you know that? At MVC? I did not know that. Yeah. That's probably why it's remote. Is that usual? <laughs> That's okay. It's remote. And, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Remote, horses. Yeah. They go together. They go together. Uh, anyway, back back to football. Speaking of Mustangs. Back to football. Oh, very, very, <laughs> very good. She's a pro. Um, big game for David Hightower. Uh, he's going to be in the Santa Cruz County record books um, for all eternity now. Uh, he had a five touchdown game. He had seven catches, uh, 135 yards, and he added a two point conversion. That's a total of 32 points. That's crazy. That's a lot of points. That is. That's a lot of points. That's and more than some school, some teams score in one game. <laughs> yeah. Period. Well, it's more than it's more than Watsonville scored in that entire game. NBC won 43 to 14, and uh, right now entering, I guess we haven't updated stats this year, but uh, Hightower's 32 point performance would be ninth all time uh, for single points uh, for for an interval's points scored in a single game. So big game for him. Big game for MPC, uh, excuse me, MPC. Big game for MVC um, to get their their seventh victory. Um, of course, they're I believe they're officially eligible right. for the exactly. postseason. But if you go back two years ago, they're feeling a little nervous. They felt well, they yeah. fell half point, half a power point yeah. short of reaching the postseason with that Close. seven wins. Yeah. yeah. So another victory uh, will go a long way for them, basically. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, they're really really gunning for that. That next victory, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just enough, I mean, just to say, hey, you know. Yeah, I mean, and they're they're, they're in the now. they're in the Pacific uh, the Pacific Division, which only gets one guaranteed spot. Um, right now, it's leaning towards Seaside to get that one guaranteed spot. NBC is is going for that at large bid, um, and another victory should all but seal that. But don't want to don't want to say any guarantees just yet. But right. of course, that eighth win will go a long way. Of course, way. If Seaside loses. Anything's on the table. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, but obviously, big game for the Mustangs. They will, they will look to, to continue that. They have Alisal next week. That's a huge game. They lost big time, though, to Seaside last week. So we'll see how that one pans out. But the big story was Hightower in this game. Nick Matasevich, of course, had a big game as well. 12-19, 170 yards, four touchdowns. Of course, all those touchdowns going to Hightower. And before I even mention it, uh, and we talked about it in the, in the game story, it was just that... Hightower was set up so well by NBC's running game. Right. Um, on all their scoring drives, it was run, 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 run. Throw, yeah. the, ball, throw the ball to Hightower, touchdown. Yeah. So uh, he, he was aware of it too, which was cool. Um, after the end of the game, he knew he all his all his work was done up. for him. So. Um, Plus, Reese said though that he's not even. I mean, like people might key on him now, but he's not all they have. No. Nice. Reese, Reese no. Get right. Matthew Pirtle. He'll stand out, I'm sure, one of these games uh, later in the season. Xander fisher tellas as well. Um, and the two running backs, Hugo Renteria and Cody Washington, catch the ball in the backfield as well as run the ball in the middle. So, yeah, story, same, same story as usual. They have a lot of weapons, basically. Um, 50 plus points most games. And they'll be going for another, another win, win number eight next week against LSL. Now, usually on double coverage, we only uh, kind of talk about the games that we went, the games that we saw. Um, for me and Jim, usually. Um, since I didn't see any, we're making an exception. Since she said, well, <laughs> we're also making an exception because Santa Cruz got their first win of the season. A little golf clap, what? maybe. Oh, yes. I, I'm thinking they need a full on applause. Oh, applause? Okay. But they didn't just get the win, though. I mean, they got the win. They got a it's homecoming a victory, 50 to 33 over St. Francis. Um, first win of the season for them. 
I know last week in the prediction segment, we, me and Jim both picked St. Francis, so obviously we don't know anything. Yeah, so, you know, but you're watching anyway, so yeah. pay attention. <laughs> um, and the big, the big story there was the Cardinals ground attack, 321 yards uh, for them and five touchdowns. And Ashton Davis. Ashton Davis, uh, who we've mentioned on the show fairly, you know, to quote Jim Seamus, man child, yes, Ashton Davis. She's stealing Jim Seamus' man children <laughs> from Jim Seamus. I must now dub them. It's a man, man children. child kidnapping. Exactly. Um, but yeah, kudos uh, to the start. I mean, to the Cardinals, and you know, I mean, I think with seven losses to open the season, yeah, you can, you can hang your head, you can give up on the rest of the, the, the season. Yeah, they, or, didn't, they didn't do it. Right, you can just keep fighting. But yes, so. want to say though, it's going to be a little bit rough for St. Francis from here on out. Quarterback. Got yes. Injured in the game, yep. so uh, we'll, we'll be the, looking. The backup back. quarterback got injured in the game, so. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, your quarterback's I mean, out. Your backup quarterback, Matt Clifton, he's he's out as well. So uh, they were they're only suiting up about twenty kids, twenty one kids anyway. Yep. Hopefully, I mean, no, I mean, Nick Siandro is their starter. They lost him, I think, week week three. So hopefully, he'll be back soon. I haven't heard the update just yet on him on on his status, but I mean. But they're still not, not to put any pressure on. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully it's not a bad injury. Obviously with with Clifton, but um, now would be a, a good time to come back. Obviously for for Siandro, yeah. but um, yeah, uh, tough tough one for St. Francis. But kudos to Santa Cruz for uh, sticking it out. Nice job. And moving on to Saturday's games, a big one in Felton. SLV was hosting Soquel, and it was all Soquel at the beginning, a twenty-one nothing lead. SLV fights it all the way back. 21 now all at halftime, and then SoCal just went on a run, led by Fabiana Hale to win 56-24. Hale, of course, uh, I believe is one of the man children um, that Seamus refers yes. to so often, and uh, had four Burns touchdowns. It over and over again, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and just makes up the rules in his head as to who is a man child and who yeah, is not. Yeah, exactly. Um, Hale was the big story, though, in this game. Four touchdowns in the game. He had 22 coming into the game on the season. And now it's 26. That surpasses Dwight Lowry's uh, school record of 25, set back in 2003. He was also seven yards short of his single season uh, school record for rushing in a season. He ran for 134. So he beat that. He has now 1,208 yards on the season. New school record in yards, new school record in touchdowns. I think he's going for all of the school records. He like, is a man. Can I have every school record? I'm just going to take that, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. Take it from, from Dwight yeah. Lowry. From Dwight Lowry. Lowry. Yeah. Of all people. Who yeah. well, I think owns every other record. So, yeah. yeah, there'll be a little battle there. Um, the game sounded like it was amazing. I mean, as far as the first half goes. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, a lot of pomp and circumstance to start with uh, the Dave Mays game. Dave Mays game went to Derek Petzinger, the running back, senior running back uh, for the Cougars. He got the number to wear the number 21 jersey of Mays, who was killed as a passenger in an alcohol-related car accident back in 97. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, they honor him by giving it to somebody who kind of personifies Mays yeah. and his work ethic, yeah. I think. So, um, you know, I think he did a great job in there. Uh, SLV was down and just fought its way back. It's down by three touchdowns um, and then came all the way back, scored. Uh, it was Robbie Biagioti scored with eight seconds left to put the Cougars tied 21-21 at the half. I mean, they were rolling coming out of that half, I think, fired up uh, by by having like more than 100, you said, right? Former um, yeah. players there. Yeah. It sounded like a pretty big crowd. And, the Valley's always a hard place to play anyway. It was the David Mays Memorial game. It was also a tribute game to uh, Coach Doug Morris. He's in his 25th season right now at SLV. And uh, this started at the beginning of the year. It started with like a Facebook post and word word of mouth kind of spread. And Doug said that's why he didn't know about it. Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Technology. Doug is not on Facebook. Uh, but basically more than 100 former Cougars showed up for this game. Um, it was a pretty special moment for SLV and Felton. And I mean, I know afterward, you know, Doug was talking to some of the four players and said that that comeback to tie it at 21 at halftime was 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 Cougar football, baby. You, you dropped <laughs> he the baby. Did. He which, dropped the baby, which yeah, that was awesome. That's a, that's a big bomb for him. It's just like oh. yeah, it seemed a lot of place for Doug <laughs> to drop the baby. That, that's Cougar football, baby. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Meanwhile, so Cal dropped the dropped the axe. Though they uh, went on to keep trying to keep their league hopes alive. Yeah. I mean, they stopped. SLV at a on a scoring attempt, the first scoring attempt of the second half, 
held him to a field goal, and Ron Meyer said that was really the turning point, that that was the place where where his team got fired up because they had to settle for the field goal. Yeah. After that, he let Fabiano you know, run wild yeah. away they went. And so Kel is 3-1 and one right now, still a game behind undefeated Aptos, who, uh, who was idle this week. Um, they'll need some help, obviously, if they want to get that league crown away from Aptos, but um, you know, a possible at large berth is, is maybe in their sights. It doesn't help that Santa Cruz goes to the C leagues. So they're not getting much many power points, so it will be difficult nonetheless. But every win helps, right? Basically. Exactly. So. Exactly, and they have a pretty easy season, <clears throat> season, season to close it out. So yep. they'll be doing all right. And our final game on Saturday night was Cabrillo taking on the Monterey Pens College. Lobos. Uh -huh. I like that. So it's original. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one. I don't even know what a lobo is. So. It's better than. You know a lobo? Yeah, it's a wolf. Really? Don't you speak Spanish? I'm from the no? East Coast. We don't. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, the wolves. We don't have lobos or wolves, I don't think. Uh, big win, though, for Cabrillo. They got the offense going. It was a 23 7 victory for the Seahawks. First two games, they came in totaled 60, uh, 17 points total coming into the first two games offensively. So, Good again, 23. Good thing they had some defense, of course. They had five, uh, Cabrillo's defense had five picks. They had six sacks. Uh, they, they allowed, uh, I believe, what, 34, 35 yards rushing on about 36 wow. attempts for, yeah. That's impressive. Well, it's not very good for MPC. Um, for, for, for MPC, so. Um, and they got a safety, the defense did, which, which was pretty key. A, a team safety off a bad snap. But Stephen Ross had two touchdowns running. Lucas Romancy hooked up with Devin Grimes for a, t a passing touchdown. And I think mean, like, the, big, the big thing was just that, that the offense got going. Yeah, but yeah, they finally gained a little traction and got in there. Gained a little traction. You got two more games left, and it's a little bit easier now, which is good. Hartnell's good. out of the way, FBC's out of the way. All you got left is West Valley and Gavilan. And now yeah. you're looking for a conference title. Is they can they move on to the playoffs? You know. Um, well, they're they're gonna need some help with because Hartnell is still undefeated, I believe, at this point, point. Um, and they they already beat Cabrillo, so I don't know how tiebreakers necessarily work out in the Coast Conference, but um, they're gonna need help because they don't get yeah. they don't get a chance to play Hartnell again. So, but they will get a chance to play West Valley and play Gavlin, which aren't playing as good as. Cabrillo, I think, right now at least, um, offensively and defensively. Hopefully, the, the the offense can continue with its uh, its production as of. Then they could win this last four quarters. The I last guess. two, and, yeah. and, and with a winning record. Yep, and, and the defense know. has been solid. So, um, good for them. Big win, twenty-three Yay, to seven. Cabrillo. Like I said, Yay, Cabrillo! Uh, of course, Cabrillo. the defense showed up, and uh, hopefully, that will continue next week against West Valley. All right. And that does it for this week's edition of Double Coverage. Next week is week nine, the nitty gritty. As Jim Seamus will hopefully be back. Jim Seamus will hopefully be back. Week nine. Um, although, maybe. We don't really know. maybe he might not come back. He might just live in San Diego, I think. He thinks it's classier than Santa Cruz. Oh, that's right. Oh, that, oh good one. <laughs> that's right. That stupid uh, closing yeah. line that he does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway, check us out. All the game stories online at santacruzsentinel.com slash football. Oh, she's a natural. Oh, she's already jumping the gun on Smith Football. Hi, um, sorry, you, can follow us, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm A. Matheson underscore SC. I'm Julie underscore Jag. And, you, of course, airing it out, which is CMS. You don't need to follow him because he's not here. That's right. He's if still you, into football, though. I mean, if you want talking. vacation yeah. tweets, exactly. follow Jim Seamus. Um, otherwise, check us out next week. And we'll have another week nine. and. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. It's a mess.